CMR that they have now permitted us, all of us to vigorously test the patients who are coming to the hospitals, whether they are COVID, whether they are non-COVID, whether they are actually uh, coming for surgery, whether they are coming for any other ailments. So all these actually is being done. Now about the vaccine, about the vaccine, I would like to just clear a few doubts. See, what is a vaccine? The vaccine is an attenuated form of the virus and in a very substandard dose is administered to a normal person who will develop the antibodies against the virus. And once the virus infects the person, these antibodies will immediately fight the virus when it is very low in numbers, when it is very weak and will not give him or that virus to multiply within the body. So this way the vaccine works. Now the thing about virus, what is the thing about virus? The thing about virus is virus keeps on changing the strain. So we cannot prepare a vaccine that will last for the lifetime. So these viruses, these flu viruses, or especially these bad flu viruses, these bad flu viruses, they keep on changing strains and they keep on changing strain very fast. So once and for all, a single vaccine cannot be prepared. If we prepare a vaccine, then it will change next year. So every year or every few months, we have to come up with newer vaccines against newer strains. Second thing is that any vaccine development or any new drug development has to pass through phases, which are preclinical testing. Those are testings on the animal. And then it has to be tested in humans, first healthy humans, and then the infected humans. So this process takes time. So please, uh, uh, please, you have this thing in your mind that the vaccine will definitely take time to come out. The vaccine will definitely be having its own limitations. Like we know that for swine flu, H1N1 infections, we don't have a definitive vaccine. We are changing the vaccine every year and we are taking the vaccine every year. So these are the limitations of the uh, vaccination. So we have summarized the current status of the COVID. Everybody knows about the figures and everything. So we have summarized the, what is the current status of COVID and what are the treatment options available. Now see, let me be very sure that 80% of the patients are either asymptomatic or can be treated at a home or an isolated facility. There's some few percent, percentage that 5-7% more than that will require oxygen as a support and more 5 or 7% will require ICU care and more 5-7% will require ventilatory support from which 2-3% to will be a mortality. So any patient infected with COVID has not to worry that they will be on ventilator or they will be, there will be a life-threatening condition they have to face. So see, 80% of the COVID will go away uh, on its own on the body's the defense mechanisms. Some few percent will require some medical support in form of drugs and uh, oxygenation and only few will go to the ICU for advanced management. So we have to focus currently on our immunity building. All the methods to boost our immunity has been frequently circulated by the government, by uh, health organizations. We will not go into the detail. Now, having said this, we, we want to just predict what, is, what will be the future of COVID in our country. So, see, let me be clear that we are expecting this infection to stay with us in such a way till around July, September, following which it may regress or it may die out or it may slow down. But having said this, this infection might keep on recurring every year or every second year or maybe up to five years, 10 years, we don't know. Even though we will have a vaccine, it will have a limitation. The antiviral drugs currently which are used for uh, this HIV patient, those rem remdesivir has shown some promises in the research and hopefully in future that drug may come out to be an antiviral therapy. But still the drugs do not counter the virus as easily as antibiotics counter the bacteria. So again, we are uh, basically, again, we are on our own. We don't have to expect any dramatic things when vaccines come out or uh, any antiviral drugs come out. So the, again, the question comes that will we, how will we live with this virus for longer periods? How will we move along with this virus for longer periods? So that is what we have to think now, all of us. We are expecting that infection might be in crores in a country like India, out of which we might we have discussed that 80% may be around asymptomatic or having mild symptoms. But still, the numbers will be higher. 
mortality will be in percentage very very low compared to the uh, developed countries but still we will have numbers suggesting that the mortality has taken place so what what should we do in future we should first protect our elders they are the most vulnerable to such infections we have to protect our children below the ages of 5 years they are most vulnerable to these infections then we have to protect the immunocompromised people now who are immunocompromised whose immune system will not fight that much compared to other now these are the diabetics these are the hypertensive the cardiac problem people these are the people on dialysis these are the people post transplantation these are the people who are taking treatment for cancer or who are not taking treatment for cancer so these are the patients who fall in a immunocompromised uh, status and these people are more vulnerable so until the herd immunity develops until the effective vaccination develops until the drugs develop for this we have to protect these people who are with us so this is our prime responsibility second for us we have to keep on boosting our immunity we have to keep on taking those measures as advised by each and everybody and that is widely available but the question comes what about the social life what about the other healthcare needs so now we are going to talk on that that are we really neglecting our health in these times because non covid problems also do basically come into the picture and they do demand some consideration from all of us now let us go into some details so having said that we we need to live with it we have to learn to live with it now let me give a few examples like suppose you are a hypertensive have you have you actually got your blood pressure measured in last one month i doubt if you are a diabetic have you actually got your blood sugar done in a proper way i have serious doubts have you ever consulted your doctors in a proper way in a telemedicine way i have again serious doubt we keep on thinking within ourselves about the covid about the risk but we are neglecting other ailments that are within our body which needs our attention and care and proper guidance as we used to do during the time suppose somebody has a scheduled health checkup is is anybody have postponed that date for the health checkup see health checkups are generally advised one yearly or six monthly so might be people might be having their dates in the month of march or in the month of april or in the month of may so I, are we neglecting those dates we don't know in the last checkup we must have been told that your blood pressure is just borderline we'll just see after six months what is what is happening so wait and watch is a part of medical treatment that is often advised let's see we'll follow up after 6 months so these are standard sentences used by doctors which are actually part of medical treatment and wait and watch or follow up after 6 months or follow up after an year these are standard treatment see somebody in a mammogram see mammogram is a x ray of the uh, female breast so somebody has detected a very very small tumor very small tumor benign tumor before one year and they have advised the patient that you come after one month or you come after six months or you come after one year for follow up so are we aware of that we are neglecting those needs now let me let me explain that how we are we will be going or we will be converting the non emergency situations into the emergency by neglecting these things like suppose we today have a chest pain what will we do we'll ignore it bole is time pe bahar nahi nikal sakte kya karenge chodo अब हो सकता है वो कोई एंजाइना का पेन है माइल्ड एंजाइना पेन है अगर हम उसको निगलेक्ट इफ यू आर निगलेक्टिंग इट माइट बी टूमोरो वी मे प्रेजेंट टू द इमरजेंसी विद एन एक्यूट एम आई तो जो पहले दस साल पहले बीस साल पहले जो होता था लेट पीपल यूज टू निगलेक्ट देर हेल्थ एंड देन दे यूज टू प्रेजेंट वेरी लेट इन टू द हॉस्पिटल विथ कॉम्प्लीकेशन एंड विद इमरजेंसी सिचुएशन विच आर नॉट अ प्लेजेंट सिचुएशन फॉर एनी बडी ऑन आई दर साइड so again are we moving back towards that are we neglecting other problems apart from covid and are we making it more complicated are we going to be present at a later stage if we have something and we are not detecting it today as a cancer so are we going to the hospital after 3 months with a spread in the body so these are the questions uh, we need to ask see if we take about abdominal pain today we have an abdominal pain we are ignoring might be that pain is related to some kidney stone or gallbladder stone 
So might be that stone is obstructing something and might be the pus develops in the organ after 15 days or one month. So are we again ready for converting such situation into an emergency situation? So I have serious doubts that why we are all the time thinking about COVID, which is going to stay with us for longer periods, which is coming with all its limitations and we are fighting vigorously. But we need to take care of ourselves. We as an individual is not only for danger, having danger from COVID, but we as an individual is having danger from all other health ailments that we are currently suffering or we have been suffering from in past or we have been instructed to be careful about. So what are, what are we doing for that? The chest pain, as I told you, that angina, it might be an angina, undetected, it may present as an acute MI. Cancer treatment, see chemotherapy for cancer, radiation treatment for cancer. If these things are delayed, then it will come up in a big way. There will be a huge spread of uh, this cancer. So again, we have to think about it. Now dialysis, dialysis if neglected, patient might require transplantation immediately if the dialysis is not getting done on time. So we are not we are not doing these things. We are not serious about these things. We as a community need to think about that why we should neglect all these things. So similar things, uh, each of you must be aware of about about your health problems, and you must think over that till when, till which time. Now now the question comes to our mind that what can we do? See, if we have a hypertension, if we have a diabetes, it is neglected, we are not following up. If we have a health checkup date, if we have a mild chest pain, we have an abdominal pain. Now what can we do? We cannot go to the hospital because hospitals are basically currently transmitting infections of COVID. That is what somebody has told us or we have heard from some media people or like that. Now, are we believing it? Yes, if somebody tells us in an authoritative way, okay, hospital say it's a nurse positive eye, doctor positive eye, we'll be definitely worried. So now we all need to understand that what hospitals are doing worldwide to assure the non-COVID patients that we are taking care of non-COVID patients also with proper guidelines. So this is what we need to understand. We have another options of teleconsultation. All the hospitals uh, across India and across the globe are coming out in a big way. See, let me be very clear that world is going to digitally be digitally transformed. And we all have to be ready to be digitally transformed. So teleconsultation, which was basically a slow starter and a sluggish starter, and it was just going on slowly and sluggishly, has come out in a big way. So I personally, all of you are my friends, family members, so I personally would request you that you go for teleconsultation. So that is that is uh, important. You stay connected with your expert. You stay connected with your expert. That is that is the need of the hour. Don't think it. Don't think amongst yourself. You need you need to stay connected to your expert. Second services which the hospitals are providing are the home care services. See today everything and anything is possible at home with few limitations. You can get all your pharmacy at home. You can get your blood tested at home. You can get uh, any services from medical professionals at home whenever you are in doubt. So I again encourage you and I again request you to use these services rather than uh, self-medication or uh, rather than uh, thinking about it. So these are the two services I would definitely, I would recommend that uh, we all should uh, use. So we have to stay uh, connected to our experts. Uh, uh, see, with your kind permission, I would like to share a small PPT uh, with all of you. Uh, you may take a snap uh, whenever you feel proper or uh, we can uh, share it offline. So we'll just break for the PPT and after that uh, we will open the question answer session. Yeah, please. So this is our uh, digital consultation app or teleconsultation app which currently uh, is being uh, uh, circulated uh, for the uh, laptop and the desktop usage and the mobile usage version will be following soon. But these are wonderful app uh, where you can connect with your doctor, you can choose your doctor, you can upload your reports, you can discuss with them, you can get prescriptions. So this is one way to stay connected. See, these are hospitals uh, across the uh, globe and in India, which are uh, again and again telling you that uh, please, we are, we are there for you. Please don't neglect your other health. 
please we are, we are all there for you so you can think on those lines also See, these are the home care services as i told you home care services are also uh, currently the need of the hour and uh, social distancing with due precautions we can allow the personnel they are from healthcare they they know all the uh, these guidelines they know all the distancing uh, guidelines they know the sanitization principle so uh, you can uh, try this out in need See, this is the most important slide uh, where questions definitely keep on coming to our mind that our hospital safe place to visit why should we visit hospital in this time but see we at shelby i don't know about other hospitals but all hospitals are following the same guidelines and they are on the same lines but we at shelby definitely we follow huge covid guidelines to basically cater to our non covid patients See, the rt pcr testing is now compulsory at our facility and any patient getting admitted for any surgery or for any other ailment this testing is a must and only after this testing facilities we allow our doctors and uh, our patients to get operated so this again is a very safe uh, measure for our doctors for our staff and all of us uh, within the hospital premises uh, we have a flu desk uh, with screening as per the icmr guidelines so appropriately uh, some suspected cases are uh, handled in a way uh, currently with the government uh, guidelines we have full uh, sanitization and frequent sanitization at all public areas social dist distancing among the hospital employee and patients have been vigorously instructed and promoted our employees are instructed to be not going very near to the patient we are only allowing one or two relatives with the patient we are advising our staff to frequently talk to them on intercoms when they are admitted rather than going to the rooms frequently as we are used to we are using the pp and the mask as per the icmr guidelines so again restriction in visitors policy and uh, avoiding direct contact with the patient this is a interesting slide uh, what uh, actually i have tried to put what is there in my mind that what was life uh, before covid and what is life going to be after covid so this is just a discussion uh, nothing uh, technical or uh, anything about it uh, we we just thought that these are the things might be we are leaving behind or might be they will not be part of our life so these are the lost companions that is what i feel let us see one by one if we don't know where we will be able to get back to this or i'll be losing them so this these were the things we are we were currently doing before the covid now let's see what life can be after covid again a uh, uh, thought again a uh, discussion point or uh, let all of us uh, discuss it after uh, with the q and a session e-commerce will be fully promotional smartphones and tv will be used more instead of theaters online games will be the entertaining things online food deliveries webinars will be frequently there social distancing will be part of our life for long long periods home workouts instead of going to gyms video conferencing and of course work from home uh, that is all we know that we have been doing so these are the few thoughts that how life might change after the covid and how we have to all live with this so we'll discuss this during our interaction so any any inquiries any uh, queries interactive sessions uh, we want we can you can get in touch with me uh you can take a snap or we can share this uh, offline uh, with all of you on request uh, to your email ids so we'll be opening up the session for question and answers and the discussions amongst the group which is a very learned uh, group of people who are actually part of this webinar so let's open it up please
First of all, I would like to thank you, Dr. Nila Brahmachari, sir, for this uh, highly interesting question. If you wish, logo me aaj aapko sahaye. Agar kisi ko normal sardi khati bhi ho rahi hai, to they get afraid ki kahi unhe COVID-19 to nahi hai, aur is dar ke wajah se wo normally doctor ko approach nahi kar rahe hai. So, sir, I just wanted to know, so which is the right time to approach doctor for COVID-19 test? Aise kaun se symptoms hai? कि जिस सिम्टम्स हमें लगता है कि ये नॉर्मल सर्दी खांसी नहीं है अब हमें डॉक्टर को अप्रोच करना चाहिए फॉर अवर कोविड नाइन्टीन टेस्ट तो उसके बारे में सर आप कुछ रोशनी डाल पाओगे या कुछ थोड़ा बता पाओगे डेफिनेटली वसंत फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग द वेबिनार कोविड इज नथिंग बट अ फ्लू इट्स अ इट्स अ डेंजरस फ्लू कोविड इज नथिंग बट अ डेंजरस फ्लू कोविड इज नथिंग बट अ डेंजरस फ्लू विच इज हाईली कॉन्टेजियस द डिफरेंस बिटवीन नॉर्मल फ्लू एंड कोविड इट इज हाईली कॉन्टेजियस इट स्प्रेड्स वेरी फास्ट द वायरस सर्वाइव्स अंडर आउटसाइड द बॉडी फॉर लॉन्गर पीरियड्स एंड स्टिल मेंटेन्स इज अ इंफेक्टिव कैपेबिलिटी फॉर लॉन्गर पीरियड सो दिस इज द डेंजर अबाउट कोविड Different symptoms of COVID is very difficult to differentiate from other flu. But currently, when we are going through a COVID pandemic, if we get a symptoms which are having cough or fever, sore throat, or respiratory breathing difficulty, the breathing difficulty is very specific to COVID. But it occurs very late in the infective stage. So early stage, let me be very clear. It is very difficult to differentiate COVID from non-COVID flu. So you have to rely on uh, your treating consultant's advice who has been seeing you from uh, your early days. He will be able to, or she will be able to know. Second thing, you can connect to some expert whenever these are there are symptoms through the teleconsultation, and then jointly decide whether you should go for testing or not. Okay. Sterling, SCG, and Narayana, they have started uh, admitting COVID-19 patients. So, uh, Shelby Hospital and group of Shelby is planning for the future to COVID-19 patients? Definitely, yes, sir. Definitely. Definitely, we are planning to uh, contribute to these things and uh, we have our hospital at Vijay Crossroads. Which we have offered to the government uh, to dedicatedly use for the COVID. It is a 30 to 50 bedded uh, hospital uh, with isolation and proper facilities, uh, which are required as per the guidelines. So definitely, uh, we have offered our contribution. Let's see if uh, what uh, state the government takes and what what are their further uh, recommendations. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, sir. Anu, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, 
if you could guide us who should wear and who should not wear about the mask sorry sir yes, sir so at home should we wear it or can we drive wear it what is the real medical uh, advice as far as mask is concerned sir the effectiveness of mask is again a, a subject of debate and uh, we are not sure what protective uh, effect the mask is providing to all of us definitely the n95 mask these are the specially designed masks for this purpose and from an authentic uh, uh, reputed uh, companies which are manufacturing them since long they are naturally effective but these masks are basically recommended for healthcare professional who are actually treating uh, patients of suspected covid or covid or uh, say let's say any other patient during this pandemic now for common people or the people living in their home in a safe environment uh, the effectiveness or all these uh, its use is still a doubtful thing but to be on a safer side the uh, some protection is better than nothing that is we should all feel and uh, we should use it as recommended by our uh, honorable government of india and our prime minister we should uh, definitely try something which is better than nothing yes sir sir i have a question to ask yes please <laughs> um i have a question to ask that if the vaccine is uh, in 3 to 4 months so what the time what is the time to be taken for everything to settle down in this covid 19 pandemic how yes. much time it will take to settle if the vaccination is vaccine is found in 3 to 4 months okay very good question see i discussed it earlier i'll discuss it again the vaccine is not the definitive treatment for the the vaccine will take a longer time to reach to us might be 3 months 4 months might be 8 months we don't know currently in developed countries uh, the human trials have begun which is the uh, final stage of the vaccine development earlier the vaccines are first tested in animals and then they are tested on humans so the human testing has already begun and it is in the early stage but hopefully we will come out with the vaccine but still it will take time 3 months 4 months minimum to come out with the vaccine now once the vaccine comes out again vaccine will not be 100% protective because we don't know virus keeps on changing the strain as i earlier discussed the strain that was found in wuhan is not the strain that is currently being in india it is a second or third generation strain so again why vaccines have their limitations see vaccines comes out we should not be feeling that now everything is over or we have to take safety precautions we have to live with this and we have to use the vaccine in a judicious way but again don't feel that you are 100% protected labor is sure ki ye chaje sir i have a question yes please aaj motto se mara mache dimo hai sir i would like to ask sir Uh, nowadays, the testing kits are invented, which allows us to know whether the patient has corona outside or not. So the result of that is as as the proper testing kit. See, I am sorry, I am not able to hear you out. Can you please repeat it? I would like to ask that uh, the new testing kits are uh, being discovered, which. outside any not the small the result is accurate as the original test kit of corona can you can you send me your question in writing as a test See, 
I request you to send your questions on the chat because there is some audio problem I am facing. I am not able to get the question properly. So if you can write the question to me, I will try and answer it. Sir, in the meanwhile, should I ask a question? Please, sir, please go ahead. Sir, for travel, particularly international travel, what kind of precaution should people take? Sir, it's a very, very difficult question, I must say, in the current times, because the government has released the guidelines uh, for this international uh, travel because we are yet to book a uh, for international travels company has not opened up but i think a very difficult question see according to me all all sorry, not now sorry sir not now i'm talking in future after this yeah, COVID is... yeah. i understand sir see once the herd immunity has developed or a large scale population is infected then we can feel that we are safe till then I don't know what guidelines they are coming up with, but testing every individual before they fly uh, for longer hours okay. would be the need of the hour. The people who will be flying for longer periods has to be tested before they board the flight. Okay, sir. See, uh, Musa, the, your question I like to answer that the new corona testing kits are invented which tests the patient immediately. So the result is accurate as the original kit. See, there are two types of testing. Uh, one is the RT-PCR testing, that is a definitive testing. And uh, one is the short testing, that is the antibody testing. The antibody testing is not as effective as the uh, RT-PCR testing. The antibody uh, testing, we get a very quick result in half an hour or one hour. But uh, there are serious doubts uh, on uh, this uh, testing method. And the ICMR has currently asked all of us to stop uh, testing the corona because it gives very erratic and false results. So it should not be relied on as per current guidelines and we should only rely on the definitive that is the RT-PCR testing and we should uh, in doubt get it done and we should wait for the 24 hours or uh, say 16 hours of TET which has been uh, advocated and then only we can decide. Hi, Surbhi. I, I have a question from you that it is okay to eat raw vegetables and fruits now. Is soaking them in plain water enough or should turmeric and salt be added? See, definitely it is not safe. Uh, what what uh, messages we are getting that the vendors are getting infected or the virus survives outside the body for a longer period. This thing is definitely not safe. Now, there are no standard uh, methods of uh, how these vegetables and fruits can be sterilized. So these are all homemade things. I, I personally don't have any data or any authentic uh, comments on this. But you can definitely tie out uh, warm water or uh, turmeric or some people are washing it with uh, salt water or uh, caustic soda. So these are the different... <laughs> So otherwise it is difficult to sterilize those uh, these vegetables and best way is if we feel uh, that uh, these potential threats, so best avoid them under current situation. Yes. Sir, can I ask a question, sir? And the ICMR, that they have now permitted us, all of us to vigorously test the patients who are coming to the hospitals whether they are COVID, whether they are non-COVID, whether they are actually uh, coming for surgery, whether they are coming for any other ailments. So all these actually is being done. Now about the vaccine, about the vaccine, I would like to just clear few doubts. See, what is a vaccine? The vaccine is an attenuated form of the virus and in a very substandard dose is administered to a normal person who will develop the antibodies against the virus. And once the virus infects the person, these antibodies will immediately fight the virus when it is very low in numbers, when it is very weak. 
and will not give him or that virus to multiply within the body so this way the vaccine works now the thing about virus what is the thing about virus the thing about virus is virus keeps on changing the strain so we cannot prepare a vaccine that will last for the lifetime so these viruses these flu viruses or especially these bad flu viruses these bad flu viruses they keep on changing strains and they keep on changing strain very fast so once and for all a single vaccine cannot be prepared if we prepare a vaccine then it will change next year so every year or every few months we have to come up with newer vaccines against newer strains second thing is the any vaccine development or any new drug development has to pass through phases which are pre clinical testing those are testings on the animal and then it has to be tested in humans first healthy humans and then the infected humans so this process takes time so please uh, uh, please you have this thing in your mind that the vaccine will definitely take time to come out the vaccine will definitely be having its own limitations like we know that for swine flu h1n1 infections we don't have a definitive vaccine we are changing the vaccine every year and we are taking the vaccine every year so these are the limitations of the uh, vaccination so we have summarized the current status of the covid everybody knows about the figures and everything so we have summarized uh, what is the current status of covid and what are the treatment options available now see let me be very sure that 80% of the patients are either asymptomatic or can be treated at a home or a isolated facility there some few percent percentage that 5 7% more than that will require oxygen as a support and more 5 or 7% will require icu care and more 5 7% will require ventilatory support from which 2 to 3% will be a mortality so any patient infected with covid has not to worry that they will be on ventilator or they will be there will be a life threatening condition they have to face so see 80% of the covid will go away uh, on its own on the body's the defense mechanism some few person will require some medical support in form of drugs and uh, oxygenation and only few will go to the icu for advanced management so we have to focus currently on our immunity building all the methods to boost our immunity has been frequently circulated by the government by uh, health organizations we will not go into the detail now having said this we we want to just predict what is what will be the future of covid in our country so see let me be clear that we are expecting this infection to stay with us in such a way till around july september following which it may regress or it may die out or it may slow down but having said this this infection might keep on recurring every year or every second year or maybe up to 5 years 10 years we don't know even though we will have a vaccine it will have a limitation the antiviral drugs currently which are used for uh, this hiv patient those Rem remdesivir has shown some promises in the research and hopefully in future that drug may come out to be an antiviral therapy but still the drugs do not counter the virus as easily as antibiotics counter the bacteria so again we are basically again we are on our own we don't have to expect any dramatic things when vaccines come out or uh, any antiviral drugs come out so the again the question comes that will we how will we live with this virus for longer period how will we move along with this virus for longer period so that is what we have to think now all of us we are expecting that infection might be crores in a country like india out of which we might we have discussed that 80% may be around asymptomatic or having mild symptoms but still the numbers will be higher mortality will be in percentage very very low compared to the developed countries but still we will have numbers suggesting that the mortality has taken place so what what should we do in future we should first protect our elders they are the most vulnerable to such infections we have to protect our children below the ages of 5 years they are most vulnerable to these infections then we have to protect the immunocompromised people now who are immunocompromised whose immune system will not fight that much compared to other now these are the diabetics these are the hypertensive the cardiac problem people these are the people on dialysis these are the people post transplantation these are the people who are taking 
treatment for cancer or who are not taking treatment for cancer. So these are the patients who fall in an immunocompromised uh, status and these people are more vulnerable. So until the herd immunity develops, until the effective vaccination develops, until the drugs develop for this, we have to protect these people who are with us. So this is our prime responsibility. Second, for us, we have to keep on boosting our immunity. We have to keep on taking those measures as advised by each and everybody and that is widely available. But the question comes, what about the social life? What about the other healthcare needs? So now we are going to talk on that, that are we really neglecting our health in these times? Because non-COVID problems also do basically come into the picture and they do demand some consideration from all of us. Now let us go into some details. So having said that we, we need to live with it, we have to learn to live with it. Now let me give a few examples. Like suppose you are a hypertensive. Have you, have you actually got your blood pressure measured in last one month? I doubt. If you are a diabetic, have you actually got your blood sugar done in a proper way? I have serious doubts. Have you ever consulted your doctors in a proper way, in a telemedicine way? I have again serious doubt. We keep on thinking within ourselves about the COVID, about the risk, but we are neglecting other ailments that are within our body, which needs our attention and care and proper guidance as we used to do during the time. Suppose somebody has a scheduled health checkup. Is, is anybody have postponed that date for the health checkup? See, health checkups are generally advised one yearly or six monthly. So might be people might be having their dates in the month of March or in the month of April or in the month of May. So I, are we neglecting those dates? We don't know. In the last checkup, we must have been told that your blood pressure is just borderline. We'll just see after six months what, what is happening. So wait and watch is a part of medical treatment that is often advised. Let's see, we'll follow up after six months.